Hey guys, happy Monday. How's it going? Welcome to Pro Singer Success Collective, what I like to call our little motivational Monday talks. It's a great way for me to be able to bring topics to you that are super important that I know so many singers deal with that I have some perspective on. And so this is where I get to share with you. And so I I'm going to talk to you guys today about the best way that I know how to eliminate nerves before a gig. And this is common, right? I mean, it's part of the singer's journey is dealing with nerves and learning what to do to calm your body, connect mind and body in a way that allows you to do what you do best. It allows you to tap into your heart space, your skill set, your mindset, so that you can stand on that stage and tap into the potential of your talent that you know is within you. And nerves get in the way of that, as we know. And I think a lot of times nerves come in when we're worried about a couple of things. Number one, we're worried about whether our voice and our instrument is going to show up. And that's honestly like, I'm just going to hardcore you here. That's lack of preparation. And I don't mean preparation as in you don't know the words or you don't know your melody or you haven't practiced with the band or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure that your technique is bulletproof, making sure that you 100% know that you can trust your technique is going to be there for you because you have set a level of uh, muscle memory and a level of, of default in that technique. So everything that I'm going to tell you today assumes that you have done that. If you haven't done that, then of course, I'd be nervous too if I didn't have bulletproof technique. What do I mean by that? I mean that you know that you can deliver anywhere and to anyone in front of however many people, anytime, when it counts, no matter what. So assuming that you have that bulletproof technique, if you don't, then that's something else that we can talk about for sure, because you need that, right? But in order to be able to bring the highest level of potential to your voice, to the performance, when it counts, without the nerves overtaking you, that requires a little something else in the mindset. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm curious if you're watching this, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching the replay, tell me when, well, first of all, tell me, do you experience nerves when it counts? Like before a gig, any kind of gig, an audition, a big gig, who here experiences nerves? And tell me if you do experience it, are they manageable or do they really overtake you? Do they really debilitate you? So first of all, tell me in the chat because there's a spectrum of nerves, right? And depending on where you are on that spectrum of nerves from just a little excitement zhuzh, to totally debilitating where your throat closes up and your mouth gets dry and you forget all the lyrics, right? I mean, how many times has that happened where you know the song, you know the song, but because of the nerves, all of a sudden you get up when it counts and like, there goes the lyrics. Does that happen to you? So first of all, tell me what kind of nerves that you get, how it shows up, how bad it is, because I will absolutely comment back to you in the chat or live. So what I want to, what I want to give you today is the number one thing that I know that eliminates nerves before a gig is knowing how to get in state. So what do I mean by that? How to get in state. So what being in state means is being in the area of your awareness, in your mind, in your energy, where you are a clear channel. You are able to tap into your mind body in a way that is not interfered with any chatter from the outside or any chatter from the inside. And there are ways to get in state. So first, it has to do with your energy. Anything that is a pattern interrupt for your energy. So oftentimes before we have a big gig, 
our energy can feel very scattered because we're thinking about, uh, you know, let's say you're doing a gig with your band. You're worried about, you know, how are we getting to the gig? Do we have all our equipment? We're setting up. We're doing sound check. We're doing all these things. Is my costume? Is my hair? Like, let's say you're doing a Broadway gig or an opera, uh, you know, performance where your your costume, your hair, like, you know, it, are your props ready? You know, there's all of that logistical stuff which can feel very scattered. It can also feel very scattered, you know, just leading up to that before you're even at the theater you do I have everything am I do I forget anything so there's all that stuff that's just you know a lot of chatter and a lot of stuff that's just logistically taking up real estate in your energy and in your mind but then there's also the emotions the emotional home and state that you tend to live in when you're worried let's say let's say it's it's there's high stakes or let's say you're performing something you've never done before let's say you're performing in a place that you've never performed or where um you know there's a lot that's at stake and so now the emotional chatter and clutter is also getting involved where your mind wants to go to that place of what if what if i forget the words what if i get up there and uh my high note, I bomb the high note and it just doesn't come out the way I want. What if I get up there and I forget my lyrics? What if I get up there and, uh, you know, halfway through, I it feels really strained and it's not good and I start, you know, getting vocally fatigued. All the what ifs that tend to come when we're not totally secure in what we're doing or when we're doing something new and we just don't have any data yet as to how we're going to go, how it's going to go for us. So all those what ifs creates an emotional home of insecurity, of uncertainty. And so the logistical uncertainty and the emotional uncertainty is because right in that moment, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And when we don't know what the outcome is going to be, that makes us nervous because we think that we can, we want to try to control that outcome. And so in order to understand how to eliminate nerves, you got to understand why you're nervous in the first place. And all nerves, no matter what it is, if it's nervous because you're about to take a test in fifth grade, or you're nervous because you're having the biggest audition of your life, the biggest show, whatever, we get nervous because we want to control an outcome that oftentimes is fundamentally out of our control. We can control people, places, and things. Can we? Oh, wait a second. That's my ego mind talking. I can't control people, places, and things. None of us can. I cannot control if there's a giant storm and we don't get to the gig. I cannot control um, what the auditioners think of me. I cannot control what anyone in that audience thinks of me. But when I'm trying to do that, I get nervous without realizing that's what I'm trying to do, right? I want to control the outcome because I don't want to fail. And I think that if I can just control every little piece of this, that I won't fail and then I won't have to experience the pain of failing. And that's why I'm nervous. I am nervous because I am trying to control something that is fundamentally out of my control. I am trying to create certainty by trying to control all these things that I can't control, and that makes me nervous. And fundamentally, what I really want is certainty. That's what we all want. We all want to know that we're going to get up there and have that certainty that it's all going to be okay. So now this is where, you know, getting in state comes into play. So I said a minute ago that the number one way to eliminate nerves before a gig or a big audition or whatever is to get in state. So what that means is having a, a ritual or a, a menu of things that you do either the week leading up or the day leading up or the hour leading up to when you get on that stage that creates internal certainty. Because all those other things you can't control. You can't control if the sound guy is a jerk 
and he's gonna he's gonna dial out your monitors and then you can't hear yourself. You can't control if the sound guy doesn't know what he's doing. And now you can't hear yourself. You can't control whether the people listening like the kind of music you do or don't like the kind of music you do. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. You can't control whether you look like the casting director's ex-wife and it doesn't matter how great you sing, he is not gonna cast you because you remind him of his ex-wife. Can't control that stuff. And we want to create certainty. We want certainty so that we feel safe to be able to be vulnerable and go out there and do the thing that we know we can do. But if we're trying to create internal certainty through trying to control all those external things, it is a fool's errand. And that's why you're nervous. Because fundamentally, you're trying to control something you cannot control. So when we talk about getting in state before a gig or an audition, what we're talking about is how we create internal certainty, the things that we can do that bring us back to ourselves, that bring us back to our internal constancy, that connect us back with the essence of our energy, of who we are, and our internal certainty. So that we know when we get on that stage, we are interacting with that which we can control. We do have some influence over, and that is our state. That is our emotional home. You can always choose your emotional home, guys, always, around anything. There might be people who want to argue with me around that, but that's just been the truth of what I know, is that I get to choose my state. Now, my my gut reaction to something might not be a choice. It might just be a gut reaction conditioned by years of, you know, my own existence in my family, in my culture, in my society, and with the education that I have. But I can always choose my second home. My meaning meaning if I don't like the emotional home which was the default, I can choose another. And so learning how to pick your state, choose your state, and getting in that state before you perform, that is how you eliminate nerves before a gig, getting in state with internal certainty. So how do we do that? There's lots of ways. There's, I mean, I have a whole menu of things that I teach our singers how to do. I'm going to give you two of them today. Um, so one of the first things that I talk a lot about to the singers in our intensive training program is what we can do to create state change immediately. And one of the things that I talk about all the time and that I use personally for myself, like pretty much every day, just in day to day, is creating a soundtrack. And it's what I call your soundtrack of awesome. So my soundtrack of awesome are all the songs that when I listen to them, they just, they just bring me home. They just help put me in that place of like empowerment, ease, relaxation. You know, you, you're, you could have different soundtrack of awesomes for different states that you want to create. You could have a relaxation one. You could have a, an empowerment one, like a pump up one. You could have one that uh, brings you back to like those best times in your life that really connect you to yourself. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's like the song that you had your first kiss to and the song that, uh, you know, let's say you played a sport in high school that you'd always listen to to get yourself, you know, revved up for, for the big game. Those are the things that when immediately when you listen to those songs, they immediately take you back to that state. And so I have a soundtrack of awesome where that I have these songs on uh, and it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, like what you pick, it's just the thing that like gets you there. Right. So one of the things you can do to get in state is when you're getting dressed for the show, when you're in the shower before the gig, when you're driving to the gig, be playing your soundtrack of awesome. It's going to put you in that certainty, remind you of who you are, remind you of your, um, your emotional connection to yourself, to your present moment. Music has an amazing way of doing that, which is why we all want to make music and do music. So use it to your advantage. Make a soundtrack of awesome. Make a playlist on your phone and then use it. Don't forget to use it. Okay, so that's the first, uh, just what I would call hack, just a way of really creating state change really quickly. The second is actually 
a somatic practice. And so what it is, and, and, and it actually incorporates the soundtrack of awesome at the same time, at least the way I do it. Um, you don't have to do music with it, but I think it really helps. So to create also a, a soundtrack of awesome that really makes you feel calm, at ease, connected. So for me, it's I, songs like I put Enya. I mean, I'm dating myself here, but I put Enya on. I have some uh, Indigo Girls on. I have, you know, so those are those songs that get there for me. And then while I have my earbuds in, I'm doing a somatic physiological practice, which be, because your, your hands and your skin, it, it pulls you present immediately. And presence in time and space creates certainty. Meaning even though your brain might be wanting to connect you to certainty by listening to your soundtrack of awesome and doing some of these other things, if you have old traumas related to performance, for example, and some, some of you have them where, you know, you were booed off a stage or you forgot some, you forgot your lyrics right in the middle of it. And it was very traumatic for you, or you cracked on a big high note in front of thousands of people. Those, those kinds of things happen. And the, the trauma of that lives in the body. And so we need to, in order to create the, the state of certainty for these auditions, we need to also address the body. So I'm going to stand up here. I'm going to push my device back and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to push you even further. Okay. So I'm going to go a little further, but I think I have enough room. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to close your eyes. Now I'm going to do it with my eyes open just so that I can see you guys, but you're going to put your earbuds in and you're going to close your eyes and tactile. And so I'm going to take my glasses off. You're going to start by just ca like caressing, gentle touching around your eyes, the sockets of your eyes, down the sides of your face as you're listening to the music underneath your nose, little taps, little caresses and little taps like I'm doing like this with my fingers here around, just gentle. And then going into your hair, your scalp, feel your, feeling your scalp. All of what this is doing is bringing you into the present moment with the touch the present moment of your body, the certainty that you exist in this time and space. I know it sounds crazy, but this stuff really works. And then going down my neck like this. And then my ears. And just like really focus on the sensation. So I would not normally be talking to you while I'm doing this. Finding your ears and then the base of your skull, just really put threading your hands and rubbing around the base of your skull. It's funny, as I'm doing this, I feel energy radiating down my back. So what you're doing is you're helping to move energy. And then you're gonna go like this and you're gonna take your fingers and you're just in between your, sort of your collarbones and your breastbone here. And then around big circles and like this, you're going to go and you're going to really feel in and out of these muscles. And then you're going to brush down your arm and down your arm, both sides and you're brushing down. And then you're going to do down and up sweeping motions and really feel your fingers through your fingers. Like the object of this is not to do this mindlessly but to focus intentionally, mindfully, give yourself connection, give yourself touch, give yourself care. And you're gonna do the other side, same thing, sweeping through your fingers, do five or six for the interest of time, I'm gonna go a little faster and then down and up, yep. And then solar plexus, yep. Most of us do not touch 
our bodies in loving, centered ways that create certainty in time and place. I am here. This is what your subconscious mind is registering when you uh, feel these sensations on your skin. And then in your back, here, let me take off my sweater. Taking your knuckles and just doing like this. And do it in and around. And then your booty. <laughs> Rub your bum. <laughs> I'm serious. Rub your bum. You have full permission to rub your bum. <laughs> and then you're going to go down your legs. And I'm going to make this a little lower. Okay. Puppy's watching. And you're going to go down and up and down and up. And you're going to do this five or six times. And you're going to do the other side. Same thing. Down and up. Okay. And then you're going to come back. I'm going to pull you closer so you can see me on the couch. You're going to come back and you're going to take your hands. And if you're wearing socks, take your socks off. Actually, I'll do the other leg so you can see. Okay. And this is the best part, I think, which is to caress the bottom of your foot. The bottoms of your feet contain so many sensory receptors. Like if you've ever seen an um, Eastern practice of uh, reflexology, right? So just gently caressing the bottom of your foot, like small circles. And you're going to do this listening to music. You're going to do this in silence. And you're it, it, it's so centering, you guys. Here, mm -hmm. there you go. And you're going to do both feet, okay? Then you're going to stand back up. Let me push you out again a little further. You're going to stand back up once you've done all of that somatic work where you get to bring sensation to your body. And then you're going to do shaking, okay? So with feet, hips distance apart. And you're going to start doing it like this. And you're going to let your knees bend a little bit. And then you're going to shake. You're going to shake. And just let yourself shake. It's like you're shaking it out. And then you're really going to feel your knees. And if you can see, my heels are coming up off the floor. And I'm shaking and my heels are coming up. I'm not jumping. My toes stay on the floor, but my heels are coming up. And then you're going to add breath to it. And your arms are going to go out. And then they're going to go in. Sorry, my cord is in the way. Okay, so we're going to do this. And you're going to keep doing this with exhales, just like that. Like you're throwing away all the energy that doesn't serve you. You're getting rid of it. You're getting rid of it. And you're going to do this for like an entire song, okay? Like two to three minutes of a whole song on your soundtrack with the breaths, okay? So it's... And then close your eyes. Let it settle. And you'll feel energy. You'll feel energy down your arms. I feel it down my thighs. I feel it in the soles of my feet. Be with the energy. So this is somatic work for how to get in state, to be able to be with and create internal certainty in time and space. Now that makes you a little out of breath, right, as you do it. So I wouldn't recommend doing this right before you get on stage, but 15 minutes before can be great. Connect to your soundtrack of awesome throughout the day, but most importantly, and this is like the real stuff here, right? Most importantly, None of this matters if you don't have technique that you can rely on. None of this matters if you don't have a foundation, a bulletproof foundation, to be able to know that you can deliver no matter what. Because all the best mindset stuff in the world doesn't matter if there isn't a skill set to back it up. So if you recognize that part of the reason you 
are nervous and that you do have uncertainty is because you don't you don't really have that foundation then that re that requires you to get rigorously honest with yourself to say okay what do i need to do to get that foundation why haven't i gotten that in the past or if i have gone after certain kinds of training what why isn't it working for me maybe i need to go find something else that works better for me so I think my invitation to you guys today is to play with these somatic techniques, play with soundtrack of awesome, play with, you know, all of the, the touch techniques that ground you in time and place. And there are many, many, many other things that you can use to get in state. These are the things that, that I love that have worked for me that work for our singers in the intensive program. Um, but more than anything is to understand why the nerves are there. Because until and unless we understand that, we're never going to really be able to choose something to get in state that will address it. So uh, if you guys have any questions about this, I see there's a bunch of you who are watching live. Um, go ahead, type into the chat if there's certain things that you have tried that have worked for you for nerves. Would love to hear about that. Um, or if you want some support on understanding where the nerves come from for you and what are some other ways that you can deal with it, um, definitely type in the chat. I will either respond if you're watching live here or I will always respond after the fact if you're watching the replay. All right, guys. So I'll open it up for any Q&A that you have. Ooh, that made me, <laughs> it's funny how really the energy really moves when you do that. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to bail too soon in case anybody has a question. Um, there's ideas in the field, but I buy this for some of my friends. Yeah. I mean, look, you guys got to try different things. Different things work for different people because we all have different places that we come from, from a lot of this, you know, I mean, this can definitely help you to connect to yourself in performance. Um, you know, understanding mindset is equally important because skill set without mindset is not as effective and mindset without skill set is not as effective. So all of these techniques are to help you connect so that you can unleash the most powerful skill set that you have. But if you recognize that it's not working then maybe the skill set needs some upgrades right um yeah mantra and meditation i see in the chat mm -hmm. absolutely now those are things and i did a live about this maybe hmm, a month or two ago about you know the game isn't one on the field it's one in all the things that that team did leading up to that game that then show up on the field and so for me using meditations uh we do a whole lot of work with the singers in our program with meditation those of you who, who've like come to our workshops and stuff you know that um because that's the work that like it builds it's like depositing every time you meditate it's like depositing a, a an energy deposit into the bank of your mindset so that when it comes time to do that show you have much better uh, ability to affect your nerves, dial things back, be able to show up and get present much more quickly because you have a practice of that every single day when when you're not in a, in a moment where there's high stakes, right? Because if you're waiting to meditate until it's the day before a show, okay, that's going to do something. I mean, I'm glad that you're going to do that but how much more powerful you are at being able to center and come back to yourselves and get present. If you have a practice of doing that every day, leading up to that for months, for years, right? So I am a huge, huge proponent of meditation. So keep doing that for sure. Um, fun ways to warm up the temple. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys. Well, it's been awesome talking to you about eliminating nerves. So Look into your own uh, soundtrack, create your own soundtrack of awesome, start 
by practicing how to get in state, creating state changes, state shifts, using your sound check. Also using some of these other techniques and see how they work for you. And I, as I said at the beginning, I think it's great to have sort of a menu of these things, the things that you do daily that are like your daily deposits into your bank of your mindset. And then the things that you can draw from in the moment, um, you know, on the day of a show, before shows, have like a menu of things uh, that you can tap into to really help. Um, yeah, Qigong practice is great. Um, I see that in the chat. Uh, and, and if some of these things take some time, you know, it's also being really present to what, not just winging the day of a show, especially if it's like a big gig or a big audition or something, don't just wing it. Like be really intentional about how you use your time that day leading up to it, how you, what you do to prepare the, in the week leading up to it. Um, being intentional, like if that kind of Qigong practice works for you, but it takes time or it takes, you know, certain X, Y, Z to do it. So bake that in, like bake that into the day of your performance, bake that into the day of your audition or the week leading up to that. Um, you know, you guys, success favors the prepared, but the prepared is not just preparing your, your lyrics. It's not just memorizing lyrics and knowing your melody and, you know, being pr practicing with your accompaniment or with the band. Like that's, part of being prepared but the other part of being prepared is preparing your energy preparing your mindset and making deposits into this bank all along so that when you get into the moment of performance it's not some foreign thing it's what's just what you do it's what you've been doing all along okay everybody i love the contributions that you're making uh, to the conversation. If you have other things that have worked for you, I'd love to know. Share with the community. Rising tide lifts all boats. So if it works for you, odds are it might work for somebody else too. So don't be afraid to share it. Or if you're curious about something and you want to know, hey, Arden, I've heard about this or I've heard about that. What do you think? Let, let me know. I'll, if I have an opinion on it or if I have two cents on it, I'll certainly tell you. And if not, I'll say, I don't know about that. Tell me about it. And then I will learn something new. Okay, guys, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you next time next week on our live. Bye.